twelve silver cups. Geoffrey was a splendid runner, and at his school sports he always won all the running prizes. His father and mother felt very proud when he went up to get the silver cups up with a reward for the best runner. Really, Geoffrey, said his mother, I shall have to keep a special little cupboard made for you to keep all of your silver cups in. When you have twelve, I will get you one. Geoffrey already had eleven, so that year when he again won the prize for running, he had his twelfth silver cup. How pleased he was. Now you'll have to get me that special cupboard you promised, he said to his mother. I certainly will, she said. And in a week's time, a nice oak cupboard came with a glass door in front. There were two big shelves inside, and Geoffrey proudly arranged his cups on the top one. <laughs> Plenty of room for more cups, said his mother, smiling at him. Don't they look lovely, Geoffrey? Geoffrey was proud of his cupboard. His mother showed it to people when they came to tea, and Geoffrey liked to see people looking at it and hear them say how nice the cups were. And then, what do you think happened one night to those twelve silver cups? A burglar got into the house and stole them all. He hadn't time to take anything else because Spot the dog began to bark. Daddy woke up and heard a noise and tore downstairs, just in time to see a dark figure running down the garden. Daddy switched on the light and saw that Geoffrey's cups were gone. He ran into the garden, but the man had disappeared, so Daddy rang up the police. But nobody seemed to be able to get back Thor's cups. Geoffrey was very unhappy, because they were his, and he'd been proud of them. It had taken him years to win them, and now he would have to begin all over again to fill his oak cupboard. The policeman took a lot of notes and asked a great many questions, but he didn't catch the thief, though he said he felt he sure he knew who it was. But I've gone into his house and looked all around while I've been kissing him. I can't see the cups anywhere, said the policeman. Maybe he's hidden them somewhere and will go and get them when the fuss has died down. Two weeks went by and nothing was heard of the twelve silver cups. Then another bit of bad luck came to Geoffrey. He lost his tortoise. He had had Slawcourt, his tortoise, for six years and was fond of the quaint old creature. Slawcourt would let Geoffrey tickle him under the chin and would always poke his head out when Geoffrey whistled a special whistle. And now he was gone. Oh, mother, where did you think he can be? said Geoffrey. I've hunted over every bit of the garden. He must have escaped into someone else's garden, said mother. You know how tortoises wander, Jeff. But the wire between our garden and the next garden is quite all right, said Geoffrey. I've looked at it. What about the wire at the end of the garden? said mother. That's not so strong. Geoffrey went to look at it, and he looked very carefully indeed. Mother was right. The wire was not so strong here, and Spot had scraped at it and bent it back in one place, so it might get into the big ploughed field at the back. I guess that's where old Slowcoach got out, said Geoffrey to himself. Ugh, bother! He may be anywhere in that enormous field. Well, he's my pet, and I'd better look for him. It was a cold day, and there was frost in the wind. Geoffrey buttoned up his coat, climbed over the fence and went into the big field. He simply didn't know where to begin to look for his tortoise. His brown shell is so like the earth, I don't believe I'd see him if he's right under my nose, said the boy. Hey, Spot, come and help me. Find slow coach. Maybe your nose will find what my eyes can't. Spot squeezed through the hole in the wire and danced over the field, yelping. He sniffed here and there, and then he and Geoffrey both saw the same thing. In the middle of the field, a piece of earth flew up into the air, and then another. Geoffrey ran over the furrows, and when he got to the place, he laughed. It's old Slowcoach burying himself for the winter, he said. What a long way you've walked over the field, Slowcoach. Ruff, said Spot, and danced around the tortoise. There was nothing much to be seen of him except one hind leg, for he was now half buried. Geoffrey pulled Slowcoach gently out of the soil. Slowcoach, you have your own box of moss and bracken at home in the shed, he said. That's where you sleep for the winter, not in a damp cold field where you might be hoed up. Come along. Spot went to the hall and sniffed there, and then he began to scrape excitedly at the earth. In a few moments, Geoffrey was spattered from head to foot with flying soil. Stop, Spot, stop, he yelled. Are you thinking of burying yourself for the winter too? You're not a tortoise. Don't be silly. But Spot wouldn't stop. He went on and on digging, and then a strange thing happened. He pulled hard at a dirty brown rope and yelped loudly. Geoffrey put the tortoise down and helped Spot. He pulled at the rope and a sack came slowly up from the earth. Something inside it clinked. Geoffrey undid the rope and looked inside the little sack. 
and in it were his twelve silver cups. Yes, the thief had hurriedly buried them in the middle of the field, meaning to return for them when it was safe. Then they were all in a dirty sack, very dull and tarnished, and with scratches here and there, but safe. With slow coach in one hand, the sack over his shoulder, and Spot yelping around his feet excitedly, Jeff rushed home. Mother, mother, he yelled, I found my twelve silver cups. At least slow coach really found them, and Spot dug them up. But I've got them, I've got them, I've got them. He was so pleased, and so was his mother. Now she has cleaned them beautifully, and Geoffrey has stood them all neatly on the top shelf of his cupboard. Slow coach shall have a nice new box to go to sleep in this winter, said Geoffrey, and Spot shall have a new collar. I am pleased to have my cups back, mother. I do wonder if the thief will know. But the thief didn't know. He went digging in the field for the cups two nights later, and the policeman caught him. He won't go stealing twelve silver cups again. <laughs>